Hello there, my fellow notebook aficionados. The good folks from Qualcomm just invited us to London for an update about their upcoming silicon, which will be the biggest push for Windows on ARM in, well, forever. Ever since Apple with its very own M-series CPUs demonstrated that a full-featured desktop OS running on chips beyond the x86 architecture is indeed possible and also comes with several advantages, us Windows users have been waiting for a similar experience on our side of the fence. And the whole idea isn't quite new, and not even for Qualcomm, since you can in fact buy notebooks running on their Snapdragon SoCs today. But with just a handful of devices being offered by just a few OEMs, the real breakthrough is yet to come. With their Snapdragon Elite X set to launch sometime in mid-2024, the signs are set for exactly that breakthrough. Or what might even be a small revolution, since next to Intel and AMD, there might be a third contender powering your next laptop. And it's not just the silicon, but what feels like a really big push towards finally getting Windows on ARM off the ground for real. And not just by Qualcomm themselves, but this time around, they are backed by the full might of OEMs and almost all laptop manufacturers getting their devices ready, hopefully, bringing more efficient, quiet and seamless on-the-go computing for all of us. So what is the Snapdragon Elite X? What makes it special and should you actually care? Let's dive into it right after the intro. Before we get into what they showed us in London and at a similar event during CES earlier this year, let me bring you up to speed with what we are dealing with in a little more detail. With the X Elite, Qualcomm promises a single piece of silicon that is flexible enough to power a wide range of devices across a variety of form factors. You should just be aware that we are talking mainstream computing here. While these chips are quite capable from what we have seen so far, they will most likely not power your next gaming laptop or mobile workstation anytime soon. At its core, we are talking about a 12-core CPU capable of reaching clock speeds beyond 4 GHz, and an integrated GPU that should easily be able to keep up with Intel's new Meteor Lake chips and AMD's 8000 series of Ryzen APUs. In addition to the raw compute power, Qualcomm also has your user experience in mind, with fast future-proof Wi-Fi, the latest connectivity options and an upgraded webcam experience. So basically, everything else you need on a daily basis when interacting with your machine. Before we get any further though, Qualcomm is providing everything you are going to see today. As such, I would say it's best to take everything with a grain of salt for now, since a lot of what they are trying to bring to the market is very much theoretical at this point. While we have been able to run some benchmarks ourselves, we are talking selected tests running on their very own reference devices that aim to show the potential of the silicon in a best case scenario. So the actual performance and experience you will get from the new platform might vary greatly from device to device once they finally hit the market. That said, the preliminary numbers and results have been impressive and very promising. Compared to Intel, they can either outperform Team Blue's Meteor Lake mainstreamer, the Core Ultra 7 155H, or match them in performance with a much lower power draw. At least that is what they say, since Qualcomm did not give us any insights into what wattage the X Elite is running in their reference designs. So it's still way too early to tell what might end up on the store shelves. Still, it gives us an early impression about what to expect in regards to both Intel and AMD. GPU performance also does not look too shabby, but when it comes to applications and of course games, actually being able to utilize the raw performance capabilities of the chip, for that developers have to be on board. And while it seems like Qualcomm did their homework with that so far, and we have even seen some games running not too badly, even emulated, they can only do so much. The real question will be how many devices they can get into the hands of end users, so it becomes a viable option for software vendors and game developers to optimize or port native versions to the new platform. But with big names in the industry like Blackmagic releasing a native variant of Resolve 18, Adobe, with Photoshop and Lightroom for example, and countless others offering their software running on the new silicon at launch, we might again face a very different situation than in the years before. And since it's 2024 and we cannot talk about tech without talking about AI, offloading such workloads to a dedicated NPU will also be one of the core functions of the Snapdragon X Elite. 
The claimed performance can easily outperform what Intel and AMD have on the market today. But with Team Blue's new Lunar Lake architecture coming to the market quite soon, and Team Red's Strix Point chips being slated for a later 2024 launch as well, all with similar rumored NPU performance claims, it will be an uphill battle for the newcomer within the next few months. So will Qualcomm be able to change our everyday computing experience forever? Well, the fact remains that it is simply too early to tell. But to be quite honest, the excitement that is oozing from all of these meetings and the enthusiasm that is being spread by their teams and of course the pure potential they are showing, it is very clear that we have very exciting times ahead. Of course, it all depends on the final devices, since a good or even a great chip is simply not enough, but is merely one piece of the puzzle that has to work with the OS and the software we are using today. And then there is the incredible task of telling people to forgo the really big players out there and bet on the newcomer, which will need a tremendous effort not only for the coming launch, but also in terms of support for the years to come. But competition is always a good thing and we as consumers stand to benefit from it the most. But please folks, let me know what you think about Qualcomm's latest try with Windows on ARM and what you would expect from Snapdragon powered notebooks. As always, sound off in the comments below. That should be it for today. Please make sure to hit that like and sub button on your way out. Thanks for watching. My name is Alex and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.